Good morning and welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today, oh my gosh, we have early work day here and then it's split. Oh, I'm going to take my computer out here. So I have a big gap in the middle of the day um, and I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know. I know I'm going to come home at some point. I've got a call to get my car in for that recall. And, oh, hold on. Anyway, I am ready to go. The dogs are really snoozy this morning. They're like nappy nappersons. Are you napper pup or deuce? We'll put everybody's collar on so they can behave or tins. Oh, and I wanted to tell you, okay. You know, I dehydrated that pasta last night. So I put this a half hour ago, I put this on the counter with some warm water and it's rehydrated. Hmm. Yeah, tastes just like. But I think the real test to see if it's really quick pasta is um, to put it in on the stove and see if it only takes three to five minutes, if it lessens the 10 to 11 minutes. If not, I'll let you know. Now, the hominy is still a little too al dente in the center, so that takes a while to rehydrate, which that's okay. Um, I think I'm going to do celery. I've got to blanch it though, so I'll do that in the middle of the day and get it on the dehydrator. I will say I'd rather have that dehydrator running at night or, you know, when I'm not here <laughs> instead of while I'm here because it's, it's kind of loud. And I was looking for a marinated mushroom video. Video. Well, I did look for videos. There was a few marinated mushroom videos, but not too many that can them. So if you guys know of a good recipe or it's an approved recipe, uh, let me know. <laughs> I, I've got a good recipe for marinated mushrooms, but I want to make sure uh, that it's safe. So you have to do your research. Every canning project that I do, oh, I'm sorry, dark. Because it, it always darkens it up when the light's behind or in front of the camera. Okay. Oh, and he thinks he should have a biscuit. I always do my research before I do any canning project, and I always have. So I look for, um, I compare my recipe. Now, I haven't gone to, um, I think you can just Google marinated mushrooms extension, and universities will pop up if they've done tested recipes. <clears throat> so that's probably what I'll do this at some point. Because I'd like to do that. I'd like to have some canned marinated mushrooms on hand. Okay, and, oh, well, I don't really need a lunch. I don't really need a lunch. I, I need my water, and that's about it. So I will see you when I'm out and about, I think. Um, I gotta give the pupper deuce. You want a biscuit and straw? You do, huh? He says, well, I want a love first. I want some loving first, huh? So is Ragnar, wiggle butt. And then Shotzi Dill gets in there with the wiggle butts. <laughs> All the tails wagging. Strut's not a tail wagger. If he wags, it's like he's super excited. He's very methodical and stoic. He's my stoic boy. Okay, I'll give these guys a biscuit and then... Then you guys can go outside for the day, huh? Oh, Ragnar, he's a good boy. He's such a nice boy. Okay, we'll see you when I get back. Okay guys, I am home and I'm just gonna tell you, I, did, I was kind of disappointed at the nursery. It's still pretty early in our season and I've gotta go through my seed box. Um, but I picked up this, the lettuce that I grew last year. If you guys were with me last fall, that one raised bed was full of the most beautiful lettuce. And I've got beautiful lettuce right now, but for summertime, these Franchi seeds, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, they're from Italy, non-GMO um, seeds. They're fantastic, but they didn't have my zucchini that I wanted. So I got, oh, I got, they do have these little handbooks and I love it. 
uh, great grapes, how to grow the best ever. And my grapevine out front that's in the pot, I want to transplant it. I don't know if, uh, if I can get Eric to come over and dig the hole for me, I'm going to transplant it out back. But I've got to make sure that he can dig that hole. And then I almost have to build an arbor <laughs> for it. It's huge. It's going across my whole front porch last year, and they're beautiful. I think they were champagne grapes, but anyway, so I'm going to read this. And I got some um, stakes, so when you plant seeds, you can put a stake in the ground. These are pretty heavy duty. Um, you can write on them. The date that you plant planted them and the variety and everything and right there in the ground so okay so I got those I don't know how much gardening I'm really going to get done this year just because of Michael being out of commission because he usually helps me get ready and I got three rhubarb plants look at all beautiful these this is a rhubarb start and that's the root it's a bare root and it's already growing. All three of them have leaves on them. So two of them, I'm gonna keep these moist in this bag until I plant them Saturday. Maybe even tomorrow, my book's up in the car, but I'm gonna get those planted. I think I'm gonna put two where that one uh, mother plant was in the beginning. It'll fit two in there easy, I'll just spread them out. So I'm gonna put two there and one out in the raspberry patch. And you know how much rhubarb that's going to bring me? A lot of rhubarb. But I give it away. I can, I mean, you could actually sell it. But um, I give it away and uh, I, I'd love to have a whole patch of it at some point. Um, and really just grow my greens, my peppers, and my tomatoes. And I'd be just happy as can be. <laughs> and then, you know, in the barrels and stuff. And I might acquire a couple more barrels. Those are great to grow carrots in, um, and the kids love coming over and picking them. If I put them in one of those raised beds, they're going to want to dig them up. So I'm going to refrain from that. Anyway, so I'll be back. So guys, I wanted to show you. I just got them cleaning up my uh, Excalibur. The trays clean up so much easier than my other one because they all fit in the big side of my sink. The other one I literally would fill, clean the bathtub, fill the bathtub with hot soapy water and soak them. So this is what we got. We got a little less than a pint jar and one quart of hominy. And this takes a long time. So throw this in your super stew at the beginning of a cook in the crock pot and it'll be done when you get home. Um, the pasta. I've been getting questions. I knew I would. Um, okay, a quart and a half of pasta. Now the questions have been, so the pasta's already dried. Why would you cook it and dry it again? Well, in theory, this is supposed to cook faster. Um, and so I'm going to test that right now. I have a little pot of some boiling water. And then Michael, I'm going to make one serving for him and he'll have a pesto pasta side dish tonight with dinner. So, and I can just heat that back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm also dehydrating. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, so I've got my pasta water boiling. I just put the pasta in and I use that one pint jar. So that's gonna be two cups of pasta or more. Anyway, so I've got my timer set. It's at a rapid boil. I've got my timer set for three minutes. So I'm gonna check it at three and at five if it's not done. And if it takes 10 minutes, like the box directions, 10 to 11 minutes, then it's not worth doing. But I wanted to make sure I knew that in my mind that this would or wouldn't work. And um, sometimes when you're, you know, you're not okay for time, it makes it a little easier. If you can do it quicker, if that makes sense. The other part of that is that did rehydrate on the counter just by itself in a half hour. So that tells me that it's gonna rehydrate faster. But I could be wrong. So we're all gonna see together. And so I'm gonna dehydrate carrots and celery today. And I use the Vidalia Chop Wizard. 
Um, and I'll try to leave you a link down there uh, for one of these. They're invaluable in the kitchen, especially when you want pretty much uniform pieces for dehydration. It's just loud. And um, I split the carrots in half. And some of them I even go one step further, but it's, it's totally up to you how far you want to go. And then we're going to do celery. So my blanche water is coming up to speed. And I just heard my one minute beep for the pasta. So I'll show you at one minute. Hold on. Let's keep chopping. We, this, when it's full, holds three cups or four. I guess it holds four. Um, it's got measurements on the side. So there you go. And there you have it. And the carrots and celery will blanch for three minutes for the dehydrator. And then that way they will come back to life as good as new. If you don't do the blanching process, they're, they are really tough. Okay, I think I'm ready for that to go in the blanch water. Oop, and my pasta, there's my pasta, hold on. Okay guys, so the pasta, just at three minutes and you can squeeze it but I can tell it's not done so we're gonna let it go for two more minutes and we'll see how that does okay guys here's five minutes in and oh oh wow I don't know if you guys can see it's kind of hard to do this for you it's hot it's hot but see how pliable perfect Perfect al dente. So I saved myself six minutes on the cooking time. Now, some of you may say, why would you do that? I wouldn't do that in large quantities, but it's sure handy to have that on the shelf. If I really only have five minutes to put a side dish together, or um, we're, you know, we're going camping and we're, we're uh, a little low on fuel. Um, quick, easy meals. And you can take it from room temperature water right up to this state. So that is fantastic. That would take forever with dried pasta. In fact, I'm gonna test that theory and dry out some strictly dried pasta. If I've got another box of that, I'll do the exact same and see how long it takes with pouring hot water over it and just letting it sit on the counter. Hmm, wow, five minutes, who knew? There's your answer. So. You certainly don't have to do that. It keeps just as good in the box or, or container that you store your pasta in. It's just a way to save money if you needed some emergency food supply or you're going camping. Okay, so my carrots, I've got my full container. They're gonna go in and be blanched and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on these carrots and then I'm gonna get working on my organic celery. And these organic carrots were 49 cents a pound at Costco, cheap. Mm, delicious. Okay. Three trays of celery blanched and two trays of carrots. And I don't want to run that dehydrator all night without it being full. So we're doing beets. I bought these beets on sale at Costco and they're still good till July of this year. Believe it or not, beets are a long keeper. I put them in my egg slicer and I'm going to go ahead and set them out on the tray. And what I plan to do with these I'm not going to rehydrate them and eat them like beets, like, you know, like that. Mm, so good for you. Um, I am going to make beet powder. Have you guys seen how much beetroot powder is? <laughs> it's ridiculous. And if you consume it, um, it's really good for you. It's an energy booster. It does all kinds of things for your health. So Google that. And I'm going to make my own. Why spend 30 or $40 on a little container that won't last when I can buy fresh organic beets? And they're already cooked. They're already ready to go. I just got to put them on the egg slicer, and it works perfect. So that's what I'm doing. Yay. And I'm watching Heather. <laughs> now I want a Vitamix. OMG. I want a Vitamix. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm not going to put that on the thing just yet. Do any of you have a Vitamix? Let me know. 
I don't know how much use I would get out of it. I have a, a ninja bullet and I use that for smoothies and stuff. I don't, I don't know that I would use the Vitamix, but maybe I would. And I, it would have to be, it would have to live on the counter or I won't use it. That's why I made sure I had a space for the new dehydrator because I've learned over the years. Out of sight, out of mind. Look at it, and this tray is gonna hold a lot. This is two packages full. So, and I've got, and then whatever else, I'm gonna put these trays on the bottom so if they do uh, bleed onto the next tray, it won't matter. And at the bottom of the Excalibur, I've got a sheet of parchment paper, it works perfect. So we can put one more piece right there. And oh, one for the chef. Mm, yum. Okay. That's what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna we're having leftovers for dinner, so it's not that exciting. In fact, I'm getting ready to text my husband and see what's happening. He's probably going to the hospital again. So <clears throat> um, but it sounded like dad was doing much better last night. So hopefully he's eating better today. Alright guys, <laughs> we'll be back. Okay, so I have been busy. I went out and picked lettuce, and this is the butter lettuce variety. Mm. This is a two gallon bag, and I've pushed the air out of it. This, I had to triple wash it in the sink with vinegar water. Um, and you'll be surprised how many little critters and things will come off, little bits of dirt and all that. I mean, it's organic gardening. I don't spray anything with anything. Unless I had um, a serious problem, I would never use chemicals on anything I'm growing for food. So this is beautiful. I mean, I'm gonna let the air out now. I triple washed it with my salad spinner and my sink. Look at these leaves, they're gorgeous. This is big enough for a lettuce wrap, yum. I just love it and it's buttery and sweet. It has not gotten bitter. Mm. It's my favorite. I'm telling you. I'm so, so glad I did that row in my winter raised bed. I have not touched it. I have not watered it. I have not done anything. Um, it was a winter lettuce variety, but unbelievable. Delicious. So I'm pushing a lot of the air out. Although this lettuce will keep, if I had to keep this, like let's say we were going on a hunting or camping trip, this would keep for two weeks. So I use this on Michael's sandwiches. I use this in our salads. I haven't had to buy any lettuce. Now I have bought spinach, although the spinach that is at the one end is um, ready to pick. So I love having greens in the garden. I mean, you spend a lot of money. This would cost me for organic lettuce, this much lettuce, it would cost me a little bit of money. And anyway, and once you cut it down, it keeps growing back. So I wanted to share because I uh, just spent the last hour triple washing, picking, triple washing, draining, salad spinning, triple, you know, wash it again. And I salad spin in between washes, it just, Anything that might be on there, it loosens it up and um, it works great. And I inspect every leaf because I don't want to eat any critters. And then I took out a, a jar of my home canned Zacon ground beef. This is the ground beef that I did. Usually I dry can, but this is the ground beef that I went ahead and I put beef broth in because I had opened a jar of tur ground turkey that had chicken stock in it, and because of the, um, I believe it's the maltodextrin in there, the meat stayed very firm, more firm than if you just do it in water, where it ends up really soft and mushy, like for a sloppy joe. But even if it ends up like that, I'm okay, but I wanted to test that out, so I'll be opening this. I want to open it tonight, but we have we need to eat the leftovers we have. And then um, maybe I'll open it tomorrow. Maybe. And maybe I'll make pizza. Wouldn't that be good? Or a taco salad. <laughs> taco salad would be fantastic, but I want to see how firm this stays. I'm totally curious, but see, my headspace stayed wonderful. All the meat is still under that broth. 
Mm. Yum. Zacon has a sale going right now on grass-fed ground beef. And I've got to go look at it, but I believe it's under $3 a pound. Unreal for 93% lean. I'm going to order that again and chicken breast because even if I don't need the chicken breast, I can slice that up, dehydrate it, and my dogs have chicken jerky and for a phenomenal price because chicken jerky for dogs is expensive. So, guys, I'm going to close out the video for today. My husband still isn't home and maybe I'll take some pictures um, at, for the, at the end. I'll take some pictures so you can see what I did with the lettuce and um, I, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I hope you go check the links below. I put my mailing address a little further up in the description box and I've got my Zacon link so you can go sign up for free to get beautiful 40 pounds of grass fed ground beef. You try to find that in the store for under $3, $3 a pound. It's not gonna happen. In our local grocery store, grass-fed ground beef, that lean is, I think, $7 a pound. So it's a good buy regardless, and it's delicious. It's my favorite ground beef. And I don't really like ground beef, so I never have. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. And um, don't forget, hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, hit subscribe. Oh my gosh, I'm here every day bringing you something. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> So here's this beautiful butter lettuce out of my garden. I am so excited. I have never grown lettuce quite this beautiful in the wintertime anyway. And uh, I can't wait to grow it again. It's delicious.